Hello. Today, stuff gets harder. We're going to generate polynomials from their zeros. Then we're going to talk about other zeros that automatically happen under certain conditions. And that will take care of this video. But then the next video, the next video will have us using the rational zeros theorem, the whole thing. So get set for an interesting ride. This is gonna take work on your part. Ooh, work, but you can do it. Find a polynomial function of degree three with real coefficients that has the given zeros. Here are the given zeros. Well, when I can find my pen, here are the given zeros. C, E, R, O, S, zeros. What does that mean? Well, these are the little generators right here that are going to generate this polynomial, but we're going to find the whole thing. We're not looking for this coefficient. We're looking for the whole thing because that's the way math teachers are. Okay, if these are the zeros, then this is what I know for sure. That X equals negative two, X equals three, and X equals negative eight. Then I have to use the zero principle. And basically what that says, in fact, what it says, is that I have to have a zero here, not a negative two. You'll see why I have to do this. So what I'm going to do is add two to both sides of this equation. And that will give me X plus two equals zero. Now I have to do the same thing to x equals three and x equals negative eight. I'll subtract three from both sides. x minus three equals zero. Add eight to both sides. x plus eight equals zero. Now you're going to notice that we're doing the same steps we do when we solve a polynomial by factoring, only we're going backwards from finding the zeros or the solutions to um, finding the factors. This is a factor. This is a factor. A factor of what? Of the polynomial we're going to build. That's the process. The zeros give you the factors, then you multiply the factors together to get the polynomial. So now I'm going to multiply x plus 2 times x minus 3 times x plus 8. But remember, I'm working backwards, okay? I'm working backwards from factoring a function. First, we have to set it equal to zero, right? 
In fact, this, after we factor it, this is what we would have. And then we set each factor equal to zero, and then we solve for X. Well, now what we're going to do is multiply. I usually multiply the second two factors first. You don't have to do it my way. It's just the way I do it. So X plus two times X times X is X squared. X times eight plus eight is plus eight X minus three because it's a minus. Minus three times X is minus three X. And I've got minus three times plus eight, otherwise known as negative three times positive eight. That's negative 24. I've just multiplied these two factors together. I don't need brackets anymore. I do need parentheses to group them though. Now, before I multiply by X plus two, I have to combine my like terms. Eight X's, take away three X's, is five X's. So X plus two times X squared plus five X minus 24, I hope I said five, that eight X's minus three X's is five X's. I do hope I said that, equals zero. Cool. Now, I take this X, multiply it by the second set of parentheses, X squared plus five X minus 24, and then I take this plus two and write it here and multiply it by the second set of parentheses. X squared plus five X minus 24 equals zero. Now I distribute the X and distribute the X and distribute the X, and what that gives me is X cubed plus five X squared minus 24 X plus two X squared, because I'm distributing the two now, two X squared plus 10 X minus 48 equals zero. Now we combine our like terms. X to the third plus five X squared plus two X squared. Whoop, there. Minus 24X plus 10X. Minus 48. Now let's make sure I got all of them. And the way I usually do that is, okay, there's X to the third, 5X squared plus 2X squared, negative 24X plus 10X, minus 48. You don't have to do that either. It's just what I do to make sure I've combined, well, that I have used the like terms. Now, X to the third plus seven X squared Minus 24X plus 10X is minus 
14 x minus 48 should have written equals zero up here and equals zero down here. And now my next step is f of x equals x to the third plus 7x squared minus 14x minus 48. Now look at this. These are all of our steps to finding the zeros backwards. You would start with this. You would change it to this. You would blah, 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 go through factoring. You would factor it, probably by grouping. You would set each factor equal to zero. And then you would solve for X. And these are the zeros. Only now we're starting with the zeros. Now what I want to make, do is make sure that I got this completely correct. Yes, I did. And of course, this is the only number they're looking for in this particular problem. As you'll see, let's go back here. So all you would do is you would have a blue answer box and you would type your seven right in there. We have generated a polynomial from its zeros. Should pat yourself on the back. Later, we're going to talk about a formula that can help you. But right now, doing this is going to show you why the formula works. Here's another one, not quite so simple, but the mechanics are the same. Write a polynomial function in standard form with real coefficients, whose zeros include five, eight i, and negative eight i. We have complex conjugate zeros and one real rational zero. You're going to need this information a little later, so let's write it down right now so you're aware. Hmm. 5 is real and rational. Which means it's on the x-axis. The real part means it's on the x-axis. The rational means it's easy to find. Easier than the square root would be. Or any other kind of root. But 8i and negative 8i, I'm going to write them on the same line. R. Complex conjugate zeros. And I should have written zero up here. Five is a real and rational zero of f of x. Eight i and negative eight i are complex. Conjugate zeros. Of f of x. Now, how do I know they're zeros? That's easy. 
because we're told right here. Let's move that little guy. So we are going to use the same exact methodology we used before. We start off with X equals five, X equals eight I, and X equals negative eight I. I suppose we could put steps in this. <gasps> what a concept. Step one. Step two. We're going to create factors by putting a zero on the right hand side of these little equations. I'm going to subtract five from both sides of this equation. Subtract eight I from both sides of this equation. And add eight I to both sides of this equation. Boom, 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 boom. And what I get for that is X minus five equals zero. X minus eight I equals zero. X plus eight I equals zero. Now, this is going to be a factor of our polynomial f of x right here, right up here. This is going to be a factor, and this is going to be a factor. And what we do with factors to create polynomials, to generate polynomials, Can you hear the purr of that generator? Oh my goodness. We're going to have X minus five times X minus eight I times X plus eight I equals zero. Now, when you've got complex conjugate zeros and you've translated them into factors, I have to admit, your life will be incredibly easier if you multiply them together because remember how truly excellent it is to multiply conjugates together. X minus five. There is a shortcut, but I'm going to do it the long way. X times X. X times plus eight I. Negative eight I times X or minus eight I times X. And minus eight I times plus eight I negative and positive. Okay, here we go. X squared plus 8i times x minus 8i times x minus 64i squared equals zero. This is the beautiful thing that happens right here. 8i x minus 8i x is zero. Don't tell anybody. X minus five times 
times x squared plus zero minus 64. Uh, you have to remember now, i squared always equals negative one. So times negative one equals zero. So we're going to have x minus five times x squared plus 64 equals zero. Now we've got some more multiplying to do, but it's not that hard. I'm going to take that X, multiply it by the second set of parentheses, or you can FOIL if you know FOIL. Minus five, you can always FOIL two binomials if you know how to FOIL. It, it is a shortcut. It's not that much of a shortcut though. Okay, so distributing the x, we'll get x cubed plus 64x. Distributing the negative five, minus five x squared, minus five times 64. Hmm, hmm, hmm. 5 times 4 is 20. Carry the 2. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 2 is 32. Positive times negative is negative. So minus 3, 20 equals 0. So I have to rearrange this in descending order. x to the third minus 5, x squared, plus 64x minus 320 equals zero. And we transform that into f of x equals x to the third minus five x squared plus 64x minus 320 equals zero. Notice there are no I numbers. There are no complex numbers in this function, even though it had complex conjugate zeros. And the reason for that is when you have complex conjugate zeros, the complex numbers cancel each other out. Now let's see if my math lab agrees with this. X to the third minus five X squared plus 64 X minus 320. Yes, so this is what you would type. Well, no, what would you type in the answer box? Ah, you would type a five and a 64 and a 320 because it looks like they already have the minus sign there. But I'm not sure, you'll have to wait and see. But they probably do. So be sure to look at what signs they give you and adapt your answers accordingly. This is the magic right here that I love. Right here. Because that happens. Something like 8 i x minus 8 i x, which gives you a zero. You do have to remember that i squared is negative one. 
somewhere in intermediate algebra, you were told that. So now you've got to remember it again. Life is hard. Okay, let's move on. Now look at this. Here are the zeros. We have square root zeros. Let's read what this says. Find the polynomial function of lowest degree with only real coefficients and having the zeros. The square root of two, negative the square root of two and four. Actually, they didn't even have to say real, they could have said rational. But we'll deal with that. Come along, let's have some fun. It's easier to put your real rational number when you've got one in front. So that's the way I'm going to write the zeros. The zeros are four, the square root of two, and negative the square root of two. Now, step one, x equals four, x equals the square root of two, x equals negative, negative, the square root of two. Must have a drink. Step two. I'm going to subtract four, subtract the square root of two from both sides. Don't forget that. Add the square root of two. There now, I'll have x minus four equals zero. X minus the square root of two equals zero. X plus the square root of two equals zero. So here is a factor, here is a factor, here is a factor. I'm going to, for step three, multiply the factors together. So I've got X minus four times X minus the square root of two times X plus the square root of two equals zero. Time out for a minute. My cat wants to go out. Well, I thought she wanted to go out. Now she's making up her mind. Mm. Okay. 
I have two cats. X minus four. I think you've met them both now. All right, now, X times X, X times the square root of two, minus the square root of two times X, minus the square root of two times plus the square root of two. Notice these are conjugates. So you can kind of guess what's going to happen to the middle terms. We'll have x squared plus the square root of two times x minus the square root of two times x minus the square root of two squared equals zero. That will give us x minus four times x squared plus the square root of two x minus the square root of two x gives me zero x, which is zero, minus the square root of two squared is just two equals zero. So we're going to have x minus four times x squared minus two equals zero. And you can FOIL, you can multiply. In fact, you can even do it like this, x times x squared, x times minus two, negative four times x squared, negative four times negative two will give us x to the third minus two x minus four x squared minus four times minus two or negative four times negative two is positive eight, which translates to plus eight, and that equals zero. Rewrite your polynomial in descending order. X to the third minus four X squared minus two X plus eight equals zero. And now I'm ready to change to a function. F of X equals x to the third minus 4x squared minus 2x plus 8. Let's see if MML agrees. I didn't write it down. Or did I? No. Well, I could never make a mistake, right? Huh, don't I wish. But no, this is correct. How do I know? Go through the whole process and see if you get those zeros. Factor this. You should get those factors. Then solve for X. You should get those zeros. All right, now we're going to talk about the other zeros. We're going to be given zeros. Now, yeah, you have to memorize some stuff. Suppose a polynomial function of degree four with rational coefficients has the following given numbers as zeros. And here they should have said real. However, rational numbers are real numbers, so it's not really wrong. 
I know I need to stop criticizing. These are the factors you're given. You have a complex number. You have an irrational number. Okay. Now let me erase that little mark. I put there lest you think it's important, it's not. These are the zeros. Now it just so happens that if you're going to have real or rational or real rational coefficients, numbers in front of the variables. Something has to be true, and here it is. When you have an I number, a complex number, you've got to have its conjugate. Negative I. And if you have an irrational number, you have to have its conjugate. The conjugate of 10 minus the square root of 11 is 10 plus the square root of 11. So these are going to be your answers in the answer box. And I'm looking for Someone snuck in the house and changed my settings. Probably not, but it's a good story. There. This is the conjugate of that, and this is the conjugate of that. So now we meet the rules. Now we can make our factors, multiply the factors together, and generate the polynomials that meet these specifications, degree four and rational or real coefficients. Notice that now you will have one, two, three, four zeros. Degree four. The maximum number of real zeros is four. Well, and you've got some complex numbers. Actually, the truth is the maximum number of zeros you can have is four. If something, if a polynomial is degree four. Now, we've got another one coming up. Suppose a polynomial of degree four with rational coefficients has the given zeros. Find the other zeros. Negative four is real and rational. It doesn't have a conjugate. Seven fifths is real and rational. It doesn't have a conjugate. But the square root of five is irrational. It has a conjugate, negative the square root of five. That's your only answer this time. So remember, real rational numbers do not have conjugates, so you don't have to add the conjugates. OK. Aha, but here's another one. Suppose a polynomial of degree four. This is just like the other one, isn't it? Almost exactly. Well, we're not going to be fooled this time. This is a complex number. Here's its conjugate. This is an irrational number. Here is its conjugate.
Actually, it's not true. Let me come back here. I'm trying to think of a good way to help explain to you why we don't come up with a conjugate for negative four or seven fifths and list it here, over here. All numbers have conjugates, but negative four is not going to make an irrational or a non-real coefficient, neither is seven fifths, but that would make an irrational coefficient right there. So just try to remember, if you have a complex zero, you're also going to have to have its conjugate as a zero. And if a number is irrational, you're going to need to have its conjugate as a zero as well. They're, they're the only ones you need to do that to. Okay, now suppose that a polynomial function of degree four with rational coefficients has the given zeros. Well, here's a hint. One, two, three, that would have degree three. This is saying degree four, so there must be one more zero. Zero is an integer, okay? It's, it's just a normal kind of number. I'm trying to, to like say, okay, if something is a normal kind of number, it's not going to, you're not gonna to have to add its conjugate. Well, zero is not gonna make a negative zero. And negative eight is not gonna make a positive eight because they're already real and, and rational. Zero can be put over any number and made into a fraction. I, but zero can never be on the bottom of a fraction. I'm just reiterating that. Three I, on the other hand, will be joined by its conjugate negative three I. And here's a good one. Suppose a polynomial function of degree four with rational coefficients has the given numbers as zeros. Find the other zeros. That's all you're having to do for these. All right. If one plus four I is a zero, then its conjugate one minus four I will also be a zero. And if four plus the square root of five is a zero, then it's conjugate four minus the square root of five. Will also be a zero. And that's it for this video. We've got one more. We're gonna take everything you've learned and apply it. Everything you've learned about factors, uh, everything you've learned about creating polynomials, everything you've learned about this, about conjugates, uh, um, about conjugates. Yeah. So stay tuned. Bye bye.